Since the project trailer is 30 years old, one of the first things I wanted to look at closely was the condition of the brakes and hubs and suspension. After pulling the wheel off, I checked the condition of the rotor, which was pretty corroded. Next, I took off the grease caps and removed the castle nut so I could pull the wheel off of the spindle. There are two different ways to retain the castle nut. One of them is a tang washer, which is what this has, and the other is a cotter pin. Once I took the castle nut off, I was going to save it because it's going to be reused. Next, I pulled off the old outer bearing and pulled the hub off as well. The bearing probably was still good because it had plenty of grease on it, but I'm just going to replace everything anyway. When I pulled the old brake components off, they were worn down to the metal, and one of the brake shoes was actually in three or four pieces. I wanted to take everything down to the spindle because I was going to be replacing it with disc brakes anyway. So uh, pretty much had to cut everything off with a grinder. Even though all the bolts were cut off, it was still corroded, so I just had to beat on it with a hammer. As you can see, the condition of the brake components and the wheel hubs were pretty bad. They showed a lot of signs of pitting and corrosion from being exposed to the salt air and salt water for the last 30 years. Once I had everything down to the spindle, I used some fine sandpaper to polish up the area to make sure there was no rust or corrosion anywhere. I also used some sandpaper on a oscillating multi-tool to try to clean up the mounting area as best I could. It's probably overkill, but I just wanted to try to head off any rust at the pass before I put everything back together. Once I was done knocking off any of the loose rust, I sprayed everything down with brake cleaner and tried to get it as clean as I could. I figured since I was going to be putting it all back together and I had some extra galvanizing spray, I taped off the spindle and just sprayed the mounting area to try to prevent any rust in the future. I don't know if it'll work or not, but it was worth a try. Next I installed the brake caliber mounting bracket. It didn't come with any hardware, so I used half-inch grade 5 bolts and bolted everything together with lock washers. When installing disc brakes on a trailer, the brake caliper should always face the rear of the trailer. This is the frustrating part of the video. If you look closely, you can see something. The bearing race is already installed. They gave me an extra bearing race, so I installed it on top of the one that's there. Not realizing it, because I'm not really a mechanic, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this to pass on something I might have learned on the way. After getting the bearing all greased and put into place, and adding a little grease around it, I went to put in the grease seal. It went in fine, and I used a block of wood to tap it in nice and level not realizing that I was actually deforming the seal and it wouldn't fit onto the axle when I was done. I flipped the hub over and then put in the outer bearing and race on top of the existing race also. It didn't seem to fit but then again everything will fit if you beat on it with a hammer. Here is a close-up of the parts involved. On the left is the grease seal, and then the ring is the bearing race, and then the bearing that fits inside of it. These two parts are extra when I ordered these hubs from eTrailer. The bearing races were already installed. So, had I been a mechanic, I would have known that it was already there. Here's what the hub looks like with the race already installed, and it's not covered in grease. 
the bearing just fits right in it but when you put another race on top of it it doesn't After the hub fiasco, it was time to install the new shackles and leaf springs. I cleaned up the mounting areas with a flap disc and cleaned out the hole a little bit with a drill bit and went to install the new parts. It's a lot easier to install the new parts than cut the old ones off with a torch. I replaced all of the suspension components with new shackles, shackle bolts, and leaf springs. A lot of the stuff I got online and the U-bolts and shackles I got from a local trailer shop here in Florida. I attached everything loosely at first just so it could be maneuvered into place and then once it was all lined up tightened it up with an impact wrench. All of the hardware that I got is galvanized and anything that's not gets sprayed with galvanizing spray to try to minimize the effects of rust in a salt environment. Now it's time to put on the new U-bolts. They will hold the leaf springs to the axle. Both of the bolts are held in place with a square plate and a lock washer and a nut. The easiest way to assemble the U-bolts and the plate is to put everything together loosely and then get it all lined up, making sure that you put the nut that's at the bottom of the leaf spring pack in the center of the plate. It helps keep everything in line. Once you have everything loosely installed, use an impact wrench and tighten it up. I didn't jack the trailer up high enough to get the impact wrench underneath the axle, so I tightened everything up the old-fashioned way. Before reinstalling the new hub, I wanted to flush the old grease out of the spindle. The new grease is blue and the old grease is gray, so I just pumped it till the blue grease came out. Next, I correctly installed the grease seal and tapped it in with a wooden block. I turned it over and correctly installed the bearings. I put some grease on the spindle and then installed the new hub. Once the hub was in place, I installed the tang washer with the points facing outward and then the castle nut on top of it, tightening it down just to get everything firmly seated. Once that was done, I backed the castle nut off just a little bit and bent the tab up through the slots, holding it in place. This arrangement takes the place of a cotter pin. Finally, I slowly pump some grease into the spindle until it just started to seep out from behind the bearings. And last of all, the dust cap is tapped into place. Once everything is cleaned up, it's time to install the rotor onto the hub. This particular brand of rotor has to fit very tightly against the hub when you're installing the caliper into the bracket or else there's not enough clearance to make it fit. It took me a little bit of time to figure out the solution, but if you just take one or two lug nuts and tighten them down, it holds the rotor against the hub tightly enough 
that the caliper can fit into the bracket. The caliper bolts come with Loctite already applied to them, so they're a little tough to get started. But once they're in place, snug them up with a wrench. Done, don't forget to remove the lug nuts. Also, don't forget that the caliper will face the rear of the trailer when it's installed correctly. Finally, when you're done with everything, spray it all down with brake cleaner and wipe all the grease and oil off the rotors. Now it's time to put the wheels on. I had galvanized rims, but they were looking a little old, so I freshened them up with some galvanized spray paint that I had. Once I had all the lug nuts installed, I tightened them up in a star pattern and I was good to go. A final shot of galvanizing spray on the nuts and the studs, and we're done. Now we just have to repeat the process on the other five wheels.